Okay, we will help you through that. Um, uh, I that think a, we online. Yeah, because, because yeah, you, you sent me the picture and it said the participant Q&A chat and share screen. Mm -hmm. And I have Q&A mute video and uh, share. And when I put share, and yes. there is like the lot of like screens, picture, iCloud, Dropbox, etc. Just a moment. Uh, Sanjana, are you please able to help? Um, uh, have you, is she, is architect now able to share screen? Uh, hello, architect now. Hello. Uh, can you please, uh, is it possible for you to, to send us a picture of uh, what you can see on your screen via WhatsApp? Okay. So that we can we be able to help you with that. Sanjana, are you there? Sakshi, is Sanjana there? Uh, I'm not sure if Sanjana is here, ma'am. Okay, I, I, I just send it. One second. Uh, architect now, so there's a green button right out there. Yeah. Right yeah. Uh, click on that. Uh, uh, could you please click on that and check what are the other options that you're getting there? Okay. Shall I take photo? Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Ac actually, it's in Japanese. <laughs> um, but let's let's try. Yeah. Hi. Okay. I send it. Uh, could what is the first option that you are it's, there? It's, it, it says screen. Okay. Uh, click. Can you click on the screen? I mean, the first option that you are seeing. Yeah, but that's actually I did it, and then it said they start recording the screen, my screen. Okay, what is the second uh, option that is out there? Picture. Okay, uh, what, what is the option that you're getting when you click on the picture? Picture, okay. Uh, 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 hello, architect now. Yeah? You have to just click, uh, click on screen uh, in the options that you're seeing, like iCloud and everything, you have to click on screen. What? Can I, uh, what? Sorry, can you say again? Uh, when you click on share screen, you said you, you are getting a lot of options, right? Okay. Yeah. So what are options are you getting? So it says like you're recording the screen picture zoom. Okay. Uh, is, is it not asking you for uh, different uh, multiple devices? I mean like iCloud or uh, screen or anything? No. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, we are able to see your screen now, architect now. What? We can see your screen, architect now. Okay. Pardon, I think uh, you're able to guide her. You're doing a good uh, job. No, because uh, it's it, this is the situation. Uh, so it's shared, and I push screen. Then the the screen become like this. Uh, architect, now uh, Sakshi has your PowerPoint. She's able to share it. Okay. Um, so she can do the sharing. You can just ask her to uh, change slides, please, whenever you need her to change slides. She started okay. sharing. Please, please take a look. Okay. Can you see her screen now? Yes. Okay. So she'll change the slides for you since oh, that's we can't good. figure that. Yeah. Thank you, Sakshi. Thank you. Sure, no so, worries. So I think, are we good to start now? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Sounds great. Thank you. 
Hello, everyone. Sorry for the slight delay in starting, but I think we have um, the situation under control now and um, look forward to a wonderful reading room session with architect now and her book travels through South Indian kitchens. In a socially distanced world, Design United is an optimistic digital platform for collaborative design and connection. In a socially distanced world, Design United is an optimistic digital platform for collaborative design and connection. Design United was created in March 2020 during a period of intense lockdown and quarantine measures within the region. The aim behind Design United was to create an optimistic space for regional dialogue, connections, collaborations, and opportunities for young regional designers and design practices. A much needed network of support and peer mentorship during these uncertain times. Talented young designers and design studios working on design innovation with an approach that is relevant to our South Asian region have been invited to be a part of the platform. We also encourage design students from the region to share their work, be involved in the dialogue, and to be an active part of Design United. Design United, most of all, believes in creating a community of designers and design knowledge that is largely contextual with focus on contributing to the environment and our community. Design United believes greatly in a spirit of collaboration and idea exchange. Good evening. Welcome to Design United's 29th Design Conversation, a very special conversation, both reading room and a design conversation with architect Nao Saito of the fabulous book, Travels Through South Indian Kitchens. Architect Nao joins us from Japan, along with a group of nearly 20 or more bibliophiles, uh, readers from around the region, India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, Pakistan, who have joined us in savoring this delightful book. I would also like to uh, offer my thanks and gratitude to the fabulous Tara Books, Geeta Wolf and her team for their consistent support to Design United's reading room and for offering our reading room group a very special discount on the book. So please do go to Tara and please order your copy of the book today. So with this, uh, we would like to welcome you to Design Conversation. I'm Varna Shashidar, founder principal of a regional landscape practice VSLA based in Bengaluru. I'm supported by my wonderful DU and VSLA team in this endeavor, along with Clayworks Spaces. Clayworks creates flexible co-work spaces that focus on productivity and sustainability. Clayworks now has a complete work from home solution and you can find the details on their website. The aim behind Design United is to create an optimistic space for regional dialogue for young designers and design practices. Design Conversation has featured talented designers from our region. Sri Lanka, Pakistan, India, Nepal, selected for their innovative approaches and practices that bear a deep resonance with the place they are from. Design United features projects of design significance within the region and provides an insider's perspective. We've also had brilliant mentors, regional designers with great expertise and commitment to mentoring younger generation of designers in our past conversation. So with this, I would like to start the much anticipated design conversation and reading room session with architect Nao Saito, the author of this fabulous book. It's a part travelogue, 
a part design exploration, and the book vividly captures the author's keen and creative reading of people, of the space they inhabit through their food, their kitchens, accompanied by gorgeous drawings, illustrations, photographs, and impressions, and of course, recipes. Japanese architect Nao Sato shares both her new book and her view into her brilliant practice, Uni Design. Her work comprises architecture, furniture design, educational tool for museums, exhibition design, and is deeply grounded in the senses and personal spatial memories. Now, Saito's design work started from tactile mapping for the sighted, sighted and the visually impaired for the Finnish Federation of Visually Impaired in Helsinki. So please come join us today with a cup of filter coffee as we discover South Indian kitchens with architect Nao Seto through her book, as well as Uni Design's projects and her process. Welcome architect Nao, and welcome to our design bibliophiles and the audience joining us today. We would like architect Nao to please share her insight and her presentation with us. Thank you. Okay, uh, so shall I start? Please, yes, thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, so, um, hello everyone, uh, my name is Nao Saito and as Barana introduced um, about me, uh, I'm architect and designer based in uh, Tokyo, Japan. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining us today. It's Saturday afternoon and uh, yeah, it's very nice. And uh, uh, for today, um, I actually proposed two titles for, for my design conversation and uh, Design United people choose the one uh, says that travels through architectural space. And uh, so maybe let's start traveling through architectural space. And uh, it's maybe starting, um, so maybe next, please. Uh, next screen, please. No, uh, sorry, uh, maybe this is the reading room session. So can you switch to uh, this other one? Yeah, that one, yeah, that's good. And maybe this, uh, you can stay here, yeah. So um, our travel, uh, start, uh, my travel uh, to architectural space starts from Tokyo, uh, where I was born and uh, also my family. Uh, I grown up uh, in the big family, as you call maybe Indian people, uh, that like so like with living with three generation. So like a lot of places in Tokyo has kind of family memory and also childhood memory. And today I want to share one one sequence uh, in Tokyo. It's in Omotesando, and uh, you uh, you come up, we come up from the metro station. And it's actually, but this approach is already disappeared some years ago. So, so but and then uh, it's we are on top of the hill and it's actually like a very good approach to the big shrine, Meiji shrine. And uh, there is a tree line both side uh, of the Japanese Delkoba tree. So especially summertime when you get out from the station and start to going down the slope, uh, you can get the, you, you walk under the tree and also you get somehow the, like a nice breeze coming uh, from the down. And uh, it's really connects to my memory of the weekend and working with friends and family. And uh, when I was, I was uh, an architecture student. I wanted to find the reason why I like old part of the city in Tokyo, and uh, but not with nostalgic reason. And then kind of I find out maybe those old spot which was covered with a lot of greens caused the, caused the wind because the green makes the temperature lower. 
and maybe that really connects, uh, makes the very uh, haptic and very uh, sensitive atmosphere of the city. And at the same time, I get to know the friend, true friend who lost his sight when he was 18. And uh, he explained to me how he walks in the city. And that was very, very inspiring because he, he walked through the city, like uh, getting the information of a very small um, fragment of the city, like um, the, the direction of the, uh, the sound or the texture of the doorbell or the floor and such. And uh, this is actually the starting point of my work. And yeah, so this is the next thing. And it leads to the, it leads to the tactile map as I'm going to talk about today. And it's so, it's so traveling is walking and walking through architecture space. So next. Uh, yes. So this is the, uh, so this uh, kind of um, inspiration from Tokyo uh, make, uh, let me start a uh, design project and uh, I because I moved to Helsinki uh, to do my master study of design and there I get to know Finnish uh, the people from Finnish Federation of the Visually Impaired and there they asked me to make a tactile map of their floor plan in their new building and uh, there is like a six floors and uh, yeah and we decided to so that the tactile map should be the map for the visually impaired and the sighted to read together because visually impaired people never go to the new place by, by themselves, but always with someone who can see. Okay, so next one. So the map is located at the entrance hall of the new building called Iris. Actually, it was already 16 years ago and they're still using. Okay, next one. So uh, in, in design, um, in design method, uh, what I, I did is to give the same amount of tactile and visual information in the map. And uh, uh, the, all this pattern uh, describes the function of each room. And it's a bit uh, function like a word association game. For example, you see the ceramic tile and it's, it's described the cafeteria. And the ceramic uh, is referred to the kohiko. And also this the flower pattern of the race is uh, it's like a, this napkin you use under the uh, cinnamon roll that uh, they call pulla and the Finnish people loved eating sweet buns uh, in the afternoon. So it's more like this combination with the napkin under the uh, sweet buns and the coffee. Uh, they can maybe guess that maybe this room is the cafeteria. And next to this, uh, the bar, uh, the brown one is the bark, barge, bark. And it's very traditional material for Finnish handcraft. And it's, uh, so it's uh, described the uh, handcraft training room. So, uh, so what I did is like this, that's like um, I, give the, I give the information in the um, tactile and visual with the same amount and describe all the function of the room. So next one, please. Uh, so, and this project uh, give me a lot of uh, topic, design topic. For example, what is beautiful for fingers? And uh, I'm still working on, and uh, I think all the architect is thinking about how, how people feel about all this material in the space. And uh, now for, especially for map, I, I use uh, this NC milling machine that I draw all the, all the drawing with computer and the computer kind of make a um, carving. 
So the combination with very exact line and the, the texture of handcraft, I, I use a lot of natural materials and also working with handcraft people. So combination of this very exact and uh, quite like um, emotional and like nice to touch, uh, maybe that gives the, uh, you know, the good balance for the map is what I, I am thinking. Okay, next one. So this tactile map project continued to Japan and this is the museum map for the visually impaired and the sighted people. It, it is the floor map for main building at Tokyo National Museum in Ueno, Tokyo. And uh, yeah, so, and I always love uh, people reading uh, with their fingers. Okay, next one. So it, they use like this, that map locates in the education exhibition room in the main building and there is volunteer, museum volunteer always there. And they use uh, this map as a guidance for the visually impaired and also like normal visitors. Yeah, next one. Yes, so this is the building of this National Museum and uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it ha how do you say, the building itself works a lot with the Japanese uh, craft people uh, as interior. Next. So this is uh, the, the, the concept is, uh, I continue the same concept that um, the tactile and visual, that each pattern describe the function of the room. And so it's kind of like a between, like I, I use machine and also I use a lot of like hand, my hand, like making embroidery and working with, uh, um, uh, uh, leather and plastic and fabric and metal and uh, I make a pattern for each exhibition room. Okay, next one. Uh, for this project, it uh, I worked with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, seven Japanese traditional uh, craft craft people. And uh, because uh, uh, the, they have the exhibition room focusing on wooden sculpture, ceramic, metal works, and Ainu, and Okinawa, and Japanese sword, and uh, Urushi, Japanese lacquer. And it was very good design process uh, to discuss with the, each professional and think about what is the essence of this exhibition room and uh, like uh, transform into the material and design. Yes, next one. So this map continue to the uh, Teien Art Museum, Tokyo. And this time it's uh, not only for the visually impaired, but they, they, you, they see this map as more, a bit more like a conversation map uh, between historical architecture and people. Yeah, next. Because uh, this uh, museum is uh, uh, used to be the house built in 1933, and uh, it's um, this, fam this family invited French, uh, French designer and built the Art Deco style house. Actually, this is one of the uh, Japanese uh, Art Deco style house in Japan, which remained almost perfectly. Yeah, so next one. So now the museum, so the building is now used as a museum, but it was designed as a house, meaning like very luxury house. So the map describe uh, the time of the house. So it's the floor plan of the, of the house time, which was built in 1933. Uh, for example, there is like a two, two big dining room, like offshore dining room and family dining room. And there is like a two staircase which is main staircase for the father and, uh, and also um, 
and other staircase for servant. And, uh, and uh, there is like a servant space behind, behind the main, main rooms. And so the map uh, tells about the time of this, uh, the house, house um, about the time that the architecture was used as a house. And uh, so this is the, uh, this map is uh, uh, located in the education room in the museum and it used as a guidance for the visitors and also they, they make workshop using this map and walking through the architectural space later and coming back and talk about this experience. Yeah, next. Okay, so maybe my uh, the Finland is uh, also uh, my uh, travel experience, uh, which has a big meaning for me as like personal and also as a profession, because uh, Finland is uh, this very small country, very up north. Uh, where very extreme nature define our everyday life. Like the darkest time, which is November till uh, December. Maybe uh, the, the I, I lived in Helsinki, which is the southeast part of the country, but still maybe 9 a.m. Uh, there will be light in the city. And then maybe after 2.30, you know, it gets totally dark. And uh, but in the summertime, the sun is like almost almost um, in the sky for 24 hours. So I felt like we are very small in the big nature and uh, I cannot make everything by myself. I, you know, it's like a lot of lot of things was uh, my life was defined by this landscape. And it's so beautiful at the same time. So, you know. I almost enjoy like, yeah, this kind of like living with this um, huge extreme landscape and nature in Finland for five years. Okay, next. So uh, when you go to travel, maybe you buy souvenir. And uh, yeah, today I have a coffee filter from South, in, uh, from South India, maybe that I buy from, for friends. And uh, sometimes when friends come into our studio, like I make coffee with it. And uh, it's, it's, the souvenir is like a conversation piece, I think. And the conversation piece is the object that you, you know, it triggers the conversation and it triggers what you want to talk about. And it's actually what Japanese traditional tea ceremony is doing. They make a dialogue and they make a time through the object and space. And based on this understanding, I made a work called Tea Party on the Border. And I made a furniture set and ceramic set made out from the old house material in Finland and uh, holding the tea ceremony and uh, inviting people and uh, sharing their special memory of the house. Next. Uh, this, this project, uh, I made furniture and ceramics so that it kind of like, uh, it's you know going tearing apart and it put it in this uh, huge box that I'm I'm holding with my friend in the museum at Mito Contemporary Art Museum. Uh, so it, it can travel itself. And uh, yeah, this, um, this I didn't expect that this project travel that long, but like, yeah, this, this, uh, this February, uh, I also had the last workshop at the National Museum of Modern Art Kyoto and inviting uh, people in like a uh, west side of Japan and uh, they bring object and talking about their house. Okay, next. Okay, so it's travel sometime uh, uh, from the old architecture to the new architecture. 
And here I want to talk about two projects. Um, and the first project is its, its architecture project, its nursery. It's actually designed by NASCA, its architecture office. And I was one of the staff and working for this project. Yeah, next. Uh, I was working as more like an interior furniture architect in this project. And so designing from the small scale. So it's, so it's like a, this kind of like a library space, library corner. It's part of the like a huge uh, room or we make a living room for teachers and uh, people around and uh, such. So I was more like an interior and furniture architect uh, working for this architecture project. And next. And for this project, uh, this nursery uh, made, uh, this nursery had the old nursery building and they bought a new place, new site, and they built a new building there. So, which means the whole student and teachers are moving from the old nursery building to the new nursery building. And in this process, uh, with uh, me and the graphic designer organized a, a series of workshop to collect the memory of architectural memory from the old building and bring this memory to the new building. So in the in the old uh, old nursery school, we did a uh, um, like flotage, and so we collect the uh, the surface of the building, and also we use the paper clay to stamp, and it's also the texture, yeah, of the of the um, like several places from this old building. And using this material, a graphic designer made a, like a curtain for the for the uh, auditorium and also the sign on the glass. And also, we made a workshop with the mobile in new uh, new nursery school and this living room for teachers and parents. Uh, with I designed the display which shows the artwork of the student. Uh, so it's, it's kind of this like a showcase of a student uh, in the living room. Yeah, okay, next one. And this is the house, house housing project. And it's, uh, I, I worked with the architect office called Eureka. And here, um, kind of we work like together, but uh, I bring maybe from the small scale view and, uh, and uh, the other architect bring the view from the maybe bigger scale and it kind of matches in that way that we work together. And here, um, as maybe all the architect does, like we spend a lot of time talking with the client, like what will be the design for the house. And then we discover that actually there is like four, four members in the family and each member have the history of their own houses. It's not one, but you know, several houses that they have memories and experience. And uh, we wanted to bring this uh, memory of the uh, houses uh, into the new house. So like uh, small corners or small furniture or small scale, the corner of the house, uh, we kind of refer those memories of the client and uh, try to transfer into the, into the uh, new, new space. Yes, okay. next one. Okay, so the travels through story. Uh, so this, uh, I, I'm, talk, I'm going to talk about my exhibition design work. And when I do the exhibition design work, I always feel that picture book is the ideal source. Like I like, re I like seeing uh, 
maybe mother reading together with children and their picture book, but they, on, they don't read the book itself so seriously. Like they kind of follow the story, but at the same time, you know, all this conversation goes to maybe about today's or about the house or about the, you know, the smell or about like what happened today in the kindergarten or such. And uh, that's kind of the ideal space for me as an exhibition space that uh, we make a very clean, clear uh, sequence and scenario in the space, but still it's open to the audience or museum visitors to just go around whatever they want and come back. Okay, next. So this is the Root Brook exhibition design. And uh, so uh, this is the retrospective of Finnish ceramic artist Root Brook. And uh, it started uh, about two years ago at Tokyo Station Gallery and uh, Uni Design, my office, and uh, Eureka did uh, exhibition design together. And here, uh, um, so we wanted to bring uh, the, our understanding of how this artist made a color with her works. She, she make a ceramic work and she also designed a lot of textile. And uh, uh, as we understood, she make colors with the structure. Like uh, she, uh, it's, um, it's not the, sur and color is not about the surface, but she make the very de delicate color through weaving or she make uh, a very delicate color through the grazing in the ceramic. And it's almost like a structure, the structure of the color she makes. And it's interesting story that actually this artist wanted to be a architect in her youth time. So maybe her mind is, uh, yeah, maybe a bit similar to us. And we wanted to bring this uh, uh, idea uh, into the exhibition design. And that's why uh, we, uh, we choose this fabric, uh, which kind of shows the structure of the textile weaving and the use in the space. And which also kind of tells that this root, this artist, idea of putting artwork like in like uh, in the space like a, like a, like like um, putting a layout on the on the surface so she works really like between two dimension and three dimension and uh, uh, I hope uh, maybe people can see it like this uh, through this tra semi-transparent material that uh, the works are floating and uh, connecting each other. Next. This Tokyo Station Gallery is, uh, uh, has a very unique museum space. It's not white cube, but uh, it's the um, renovation uh, space from the old station building. So they, you, they still have a brick and brick surface from the old building. And uh, yeah, at the beginning we thought it, it, it might be difficult, but at, yeah, I mean, at the end it was very, very interesting and very actually fun to work with it. And uh, uh, we wanted to make the light coming into the exhibition room which does rarely happen, like especially painting, it's impossible. But with ceramic work, it works. I mean, we can exhibit ceramic work in natural light, which is very rare as an exhibition object. And uh, so actually the last room, uh, the museum agree and let's and to open the window, or not window, but like a curtain and uh, let the natural light inside, in, inside the, uh, exhibition room and it really changes the artwork kind of react to natural light really well and uh, yeah it was very like 
a fun, fun experience doing that. And it still continue actually travels. And now yeah. the exhibition stay at the Niigata Bandaijima Art Museum. It's until December. Okay, next. So Tara Books exhibition, that was a big, big exhibition in Japan. And I think through this exhibition, like a lot of Japanese people get to know Tara and they become big fan of it. And uh, I, I feel very honored to do exhibition design for this Tara Books exhibition too. And, uh, and uh, we may, uh, and uh, there is the line of 10 books. It's kind of a landmark books over 20 years, Tara books history. And uh, um, I, we designed a, like a case with their fluke paper, with the silk screen misprint paper uh, to bring the texture uh, to the exhibition because uh, we thought that we think uh, Tara also, I think in the like a haptic like experience of reading picture book is important. So we wanted to bring this like a tactile, the feeling of uh, material into the exhibition room. And next. Okay, uh, so this is the exhibition. It's small exhibition uh, about my book. And, uh, but here I was also thinking about what space can do when there is a story and we want to throw this story into the space. And uh, what uh, I did uh, was uh, uh, to experience this book through five senses and uh, the sense of scale with your body. Uh, so like here, yeah, uh, like bringing spices, curry, uh, curry leaves, trees, and uh, also uh, I made a one-to-one -one scale door to the uh, kitchen uh, in the memory the, from one chapter. And uh, so, so this is like a small exhibition at the Books and Modern, uh, one nice uh, bookshop and uh, gallery and in Tokyo. And, but still uh, for me, it was a good experiment, like what space can do with the story. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Architect Now, for such sensitive work and such an inspiring presentation of your design work. With this, we would like to open our session for design conversation. We uh -huh. will be moving on to our reading room segment post uh, conversation with you on your design work. Yeah. Um, so I would like to invite audience to please share your questions uh, for Architect Now through our chat box. I would also like to take this opportunity to introduce and welcome our moderators for the conversation uh, with Architect Now. Architect Grishma, who is from Davangere. She is a graduate with a master's in sustainable architecture studies from the University of Sheffield, UK. She believes in social and environmentally responsive architecture. She has a great passion for environmental conservation and sustainability. She's also currently an intern with Design United. Our second moderator for the conversation is Shubham, who is a fifth year architecture student from the Brick School of Architecture, Pune. He is interested in landscape architecture and is currently interning with VSLA in Bengaluru. He is passionate about travel, trekking, painting, and photography. Welcome to Design Conversation, Grishma and Shubham. Uh, we now open the session for conversation. Thank you. Uh, hello, Architect Now. Hello. Hi, thank you. Firstly, thank you so much for that amazing presentation of yours. It was really, really detailed and intricate. And the way you, uh, way you mentioned all the uh, small details about, you know, the uh, the specially able people was really, really interesting to see. Uh, I would really like to know. I mean, like I've I've gone through your book book uh, thoroughly, and I'm very keen to know uh, as in, you know, what are you uh, trying to explore next in that. So uh, 
what aspect of indian architecture do you wish to explore in your uh, next trip to india and can you elaborate on that a bit sorry can you uh, can you say again your question uh, what aspect of indian architecture do you wish to explore in your next trip to india what uh, what space i want to explore what aspect of indian architecture do you wish to explore ah uh, what aspect of indian architecture i want yes. to explore yes aha uh-huh. in your next trip to india mm. <laughs> oh that's um actually uh, it's uh, uh, it's um it's a little bit still this uh continuous of my kitchen journey uh i wants to know more about the relationship between your indian architecture to the landscape and uh, so that way um so i so uh, actually it's actually my next interest for next book but yeah i want to kind of wants to know the how kitchen like works with your indian kitchen works with the indian landscape or indian nature and how people use it uh, between landscape and the kitchen like interior like yeah so so that way i'm still kind of on the track of you know thinking about house and kitchen and but then like but little bit like i'm seeing with the outside yeah okay okay thank you thank you so much thank you uh um, grishma you are on mute uh hi architect now it was Hello. very interesting to see your projects or your museum projects so for the architecture of visual impair the sense of touch or tactility plays an important role do you think even the other cognitive responses are equally important like sound light etc have you incorporated any in your projects uh that's very good question because i'm very aware uh that yeah like the visually impaired people see the space or walks in the space not only with haptic but with the the like uh, the sense of hearing and uh, yeah hearing maybe especially hearing so sound is i- important but uh, actually i have never worked with sound designer for space and uh, but uh, um yeah i should do <laughs> thank you thank you for sharing <laughs> this so i just a uh, question leading to this uh, if you ever plan to do any exhibition for uh, you know the visually challenged people how do you perceive that experience as how how will create that experience where a person who is not able to see can also experience the uh, experience the uh, place that you have created in the exhibition mm? so, sorry my my english is not so good uh, can you say again the question uh, yes yes sure so uh, as you said that you have not designed anything for you know uh, tackling the visually uh, challenged people so if you if you in the near future if you try to design something for the visually challenged people how do you perceive to create that experience for them where you know they won't be able to visually see anything but how do you how do you wish to create that experience to give them the entire feel of the exhibition um actually uh for for exhibition there is like a lot of lot of try trial and lot of group working on it and i'm also working with them 
and it's more like uh, but like in lot of cases uh, it's more like they make a dialogue conversation so you you go through the you go and it's and it's actually not only for the visually impaired people but it's for us to see the art and uh, like uh, in like if you uh, like for example like uh, uh, one group is like visiting exhibition with visually impaired people and uh, we start like we stand in in the artwork and we start to describe what i see well what we see to her and uh, then it's kind of like i start to notice that like i miss a lot of things if i just see by myself like uh, so like try to describe for someone then i kind of start to see more and uh, and uh, sometimes i'm very surprised that's like how she could imagine much farther than i see and uh, with her kind of like uh, understanding and matching imagination in her side and uh, that way um like uh, uh talking is uh, of course um yeah like uh, making conversation through exhibition is the one way and also i actually i design and uh, uh, yeah today i didn't show but I also designed like a art card and uh, art card uh, that you can use uh, before like seeing art. And it's kind of to, to, to start to think about not only visual, but like other senses. So like through that educational material, like before the exhibition, I designed like uh, some material but uh, yeah, like um, for it, for exhibition room inside itself, yeah, it's it's quite challenging, yeah, to because like many artwork is, uh, yeah, you are prohibited to touch. But uh, but yeah, like that's actually what. I should do, and actually, uh, but I'm I'm uh, now working for the uh, one museum like in Nagano, and going to renewal, and uh, we are making a touch, touch gallery and uh, such things. So maybe there we can make uh, not only independent touch art gallery, but maybe bond with the the like a you know like a ordinary like a main exhibition in the exhibition room, yeah. You give me a good point. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so you have worked on several architecture projects for children. Uh, yeah. Usually, uh, designers tend to use a lot of colors while designing children projects. But yeah. you have used very neutral tones in your projects. Is there a particular reason for that? Um, no, no, but uh, when, if, I mean, uh, maybe as you see, I like colors, <laughs> but uh, for myself, but uh, if, when I use color in my design, I, I have to be very, very specific on it, yeah? So I, I just cannot use the bright colors because maybe children like it. Uh, who knows? Like, uh, I mean, I didn't like bright colors when I was small. And uh, so I need very specific reason to use colors. So, so maybe that's really, and maybe I rather wants to, and maybe bringing colors and then like the material is the, re like uh, will be the next step that like, if you kind of cover with the cut, I mean, like what kind of the material you can bring with the really like a good texture, but still has the color with it. So maybe textile is possible, but so maybe that way uh, I want to bring like more like a simple texture of material with the finishing then maybe color is maybe like a next step to bring 
So, but actually what uh, the exhibition design project that I'm working on now is for picture book for American mm -hmm. illustrator. And there now uh, I'm working on like to bring the color into the exhibition room. And uh, yeah, it takes really a long time to decide. So, <laughs> but like, yeah, I, I'm trying, but I'm also very, uh, uh, how do you say? Yeah, I, I'm not so easy like to bring colors, but if, if there is a very clear purpose, yes, I'm, I'm very happy to use it, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. So uh, my next question was, I was just uh, looking at your works and uh, there was one particular project which I uh, uh, liked very much, which was a house in the house tree. Uh -huh. Thanks. So uh, you have tried to connect memories uh, to spaces. So uh, what what all challenges do you face while you know uh, working on that project? Mm -hmm. What all what all challenges did you face while uh, uh, connecting spaces to memories? Challenges. Yeah. Ah. Uh... Maybe it's also a bit connected to the, the last question, but uh, because this family uh, lived in US for a long time and they come back, so they have a sense of colors and different materials and maybe the sense for wood in different way. Like maybe Japanese uh, in like, we, we like, we like, we, we tend to like simple and white and plain wood for architecture, but they wanted to have a dark color, dark wood color for their house. And, uh, and they wanted to have a, like a carpet in the second floor and they wanted to have a, like a bright colors for the door of the toilet and such. And uh, for, for us, um, that was a kind of challenge to use a dark, dark color. It's not dark color wood because we use like normal Japanese, um, like uh, spine, uh, pine or those trees, but with the oil coloring and making it, you know, to like a dark, to darken the color. So that was a challenge that uh, uh, to use like a different, material but like you are still into like bringing in one one space and yeah my, but that was that was difficult but yeah it was fun for us thank you so much for that so the workshop with red tactile tiles is a very interesting project uh -huh. how, did, how did you come up with such a beautiful idea you know um that's i didn't today talk <laughs> You, maybe you see the my homepage, or um, maybe I should shortly explain that like this is the um, uh, I worked with the Guma Modern Art Museum and uh, I I working with their collection painting and uh, yeah because the uh, actually the starting was very simple. This curator wanted said that we have very small budget but we want to start something with you and with the tactile and for education material to like a good introduction for elementary school children to you know see the museum and uh, but so this year we have this much budget and maybe next year this much so it should be something that it kind of continue so and then what can we do and then I was really thinking about it and I thought maybe color would be nice. That's like, so this year, the first year uh, we choose red because there was one painting, it's very kind of representative that the painting of that museum and that use red in, in very different way. So we decided to use red as a first year color and we made a set of the red collection. So what I did is I go through the, their collection and bringing the motif, uh, use, uh, the, the motif that artists draw uh, using red color and uh, make an art card with the, with the tactile and like a material. 
and yeah so but yeah it didn't continue so it's only red color but it should be like a kind of the series <laughs> thank you thank you for yeah, sharing your insights I think we are open to any audience questions uh, for Architect Now on her design work before we proceed to our reading room session. So if we do have questions, please feel free to share them via the chat box. Okay, I don't see any questions. So um, I think it's time for the really awaited um, conversation. And I would like to thank Shubham as well as Grishma for moderating uh, the design conversation and Architect Now for her wonderful work. As we move to our much awaited reading room segment, Design United believes that books cannot be replaced and uh, Design United's reading room provides a platform for a community of readers and design bibliophiles from the region to interact with renowned authors editors and designers of books relevant to our South Asian region. Travels Through South Indian Kitchens is an amalgamation of Architect Now's design background. Her interest in food, space, landscape, and is still very much a haptic deciphering of South Indian kitchens, captured with sensitivity and curiosity towards a new culture. The intangibles that she constantly aims to capture in her design work is sensitively captured through text and drawings. It's an insightful travelogue. It's also a very creative deciphering of recipes and spaces, as well as a slow unveiling of an interesting culture. So with this, uh, let's please move on to um, Architects Now's journey into South Indian kitchens. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, can I start? Okay. Uh, but um, actually, uh, at the beginning, please. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, because uh, when I do the talk session, uh, it's actually starting from uh, at the Tara Books book event. Uh, I read one chapter of this book, and maybe that's a bit too long for today, but so I want to read uh, one paragraph in two languages because uh, it's, you know, it's now uh, translated also into Japanese. So uh, maybe before this uh, presentation, I talk short, uh, I read shortly. Expanding Kitchen, it's first chapter, 10 a.m. I am at auntie's door. She is my colleague G's mother. Auntie S welcomes me wearing a light green starched cotton sari. The entrance leads into the living room, which opens out into a small balcony framed by French windows. They are open and let in the bright morning sun. There is a lot of morning light everywhere in the apartment. It is located in the inner city, close to one of Chennai's older neighborhoods. Auntie S lives with her daughter G. The other member of the household is P a young woman studying to, a, studying to be a surgeon. She is G's friend's daughter. Gita wa gogo kara shigoto no yotei da kara o hiru wa ichiji kara ne to auntie wa ryori no shitaku o hajimeru. Asa o kite saisho ni suru no wa dai dokoro no iriguchi ni aru saidan ni oinori o suru koto. Saidan o miru to hindu kyo no kami sama to issho ni 少し前に亡くなったご主人の写真が飾られている。料理の下準備は野菜を切ることからとアンティ。
。ギータが仕事に行く日は朝7時から、特に予定がなければ朝8時から料理を始めるわ。エプロンもせずに綺麗なサリーのまま台所に入っていくアンティを見て大丈夫と一瞬心配になったけれど野菜の入ったボールとまな板包丁を抱えて台所からリビングへ向かう彼女の後ろ姿を目で追っていると台所が他の部屋と境がない一続きの場所に思えてきて気持ちがふと軽くなる Okay, so、uh, can you show the, the、uh, PDF presentation? Thanks. So,、uh, so now it's the reading room session, and、uh, it's about、uh, my book, Travels Through South Indian Kitchens,、uh, published by Tara Books,、uh, Chennai, South India. And it's actually my first book. And it's translated、uh, into Japanese by myself and、uh, published Japanese version by、uh, Blue Sheep, Japanese publishing company,、uh, two years ago. Okay, next. So,、um, So, this is Chennai,、uh, South India, and、uh, I feel this is my third home, like Tokyo, Helsinki, and Chennai. And、uh, actually, I have never imagined、uh, I traveled to India in my life. But it happened so that Gita O from the Tara Books, she's the director,、uh, she was invited to the Japanese Art Museum to hold a workshop of a picture book one summer. And I was、uh, one of the participants. And that's how I get to know Gita. And,、uh, and that was the reason I visited, I traveled to Chennai and stay at the Tara Books. For three and actually three and a half months. Okay, next. Yeah, so this is the, all the m e m b e r at Tara Books、uh, in 2014 when I was there. So it's actually really whole m e m b e r from guardman, accountant, designer, editor, you know. All and the dispatching, you know, it's all people here. Yeah, next. So,、uh, editorial and design、uh, room is on the third floor of this book building. And、uh, yeah, it's i t s beautiful space to work. Yeah, next. And there is a very small apartment attached to,、uh, attached to this office. And、uh, there I, I stayed for my three month stay. And、uh, this is a kitchen, it's my kitchen、uh, in, in Tara Books book building. And that's how, this is where I、uh, encountered to South Indian kitchens. Next one. So,、um, I wrote about this my experience in the, in the first chapter, kind of this beginning chapter, like the kitchen with no idea, because、uh, I mean, I didn't have no idea what to do here. I mean, I, I like cooking, and、uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really like cooking. So, I was also a bit disappointed by myself, like,、uh, like now, like,、uh, do you know like, what to do here? But、uh, I, you know, I even couldn't lit the light in the gas, or I don't know what is many dolls in the bin and a lot of spices, and why all the flying pan is very flat, and there is coffee filter, and which water can I drink, and all this. So, this is the first sketch in, in this、uh, Tara Books kitchen that I made the object that. I don't know about. And、uh, this is actually how I started. Uh, uh, I, I, I propose、uh, the book,、uh, the content.、Uh, on the 
fifth day of my uh, stay at Tara Books, I had a meeting with Gita and other editor Gita and uh, about what I do here about my book. And uh, actually I proposed two ideas. And the first idea was the map, because uh, map of the beach. And uh, it's, it's, you know, kind of a bit related to uh, what I have been doing as a architect. And uh, so, but uh, the next idea was this kitchen. And uh, I, I still remember the moment I was really hesitate, hesitantly showing my sketchbook like and talking about uh, uh, telling them that like I want to visit like Indian people's kitchen and uh, like make a book about it. And uh, I, I was somehow it's really this idea come from the center of my heart. So I just didn't feel that it will realize. So, but uh, like immediately, like this boss Gita said, oh, that's good idea, let's do it. And then like this Gita start to call her mother and that's actually auntie and says like, yeah, like uh, can, can now come to your place tomorrow morning? And uh, you know, that's how this project started. Okay, next. Okay, this, um, so this is how the, my travel started and, uh, and at the first kitchen. Next. Yeah, so this is auntie. And uh, so I visited her at 10 a.m. And it's, yeah, it's kind of, I usually visit for lunch. Like, so I see the preparation lunch and I eat together and I leave. So maybe each stay was like a three, four hours. And uh, so this was uh, uh, like a morning visit and uh, she started working on the floor. And okay, next. And uh, um, she also bring vegetables and uh, to the living room and she sit on the floor and she start cutting it. And next. Yeah, uh, the grain was, uh, uh, when I look out the terrace, there was a grain and uh, I asked her, so what are you doing? And that grain, and she said, because ants get in to the grain, so she was sunbathing the grain and let ants go. And uh, yeah, so yeah, next. And then uh, when she made a lunch and we are eating together and she started to talk about, uh, ah, yeah, you know, some weeks ago, the monkey come to our house and uh, there was a big sound behind us while we are eating lunch like this. And we look behind and uh, on top of the fridge, there was a big monkey sitting on it. And uh, it, and uh, she just talk about this story and she go back to lunch. And uh, this is actually the sketchbook that uh, I'm bringing with me. And uh, I, I wrote all these stories and all tools and uh, everything in this sketchbook. You know, it's all, it, it, is, uh, it is the process of making book, but it's also the process of uh, starting my everyday, everyday life in Chennai because I didn't know how to do everything. So I just really wants to figure out like, you know, what to do. So I was really like uh, making all the sketches and uh, writing all these memos in my sketchbook. Okay, next. Okay, and from the beginning, um, because uh, I didn't, uh, we didn't know how the book will be shaped but from the beginning, I decided that I will measure the house or I will measure the kitchen because uh, I know that as an architect, it's such a privilege to enter the private room and to see the, their everyday life. 
And uh, I, I knew that I really should uh, share this knowledge or experience with other architects and designers. So from the beginning, I decided that like I make a measurement of the kitchen and also the space that they use for cooking. So yeah, okay, next. And uh, so this is actually the drawing for the book. And uh, they, they almost all come from my sketchbook. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's quite interesting. Like uh, for some illustration, I try to draw differently or different way than sketchbook, how I did on my sketchbook. But like I try several times and it's always come to the end that's like, I choose the one that like, you know, it's a bit similar to what I draw on my sketchbook. Maybe first grasp of the impression of the space is maybe really correct. Yeah, next one. So this is the kitchen, uh, living a uh, kitchen drawing uh, of this first chapter, expanding kitchen. So I draw kitchen and living room, and I also draw the window that where monkey comes in, and I draw the door that her her uh, how, uh, how do you say her kind of helper comes in. Okay, next. And I also, on the layer, I draw the sequence of the monkey, of the car, of the ant, and of the people. Yeah, next. And so for the book, uh, they over layer and made a, made a, you know, like a introduction. So the designer decided to show that it's always this floor, come, uh, floor plan comes the beginning of the each story. I visited 21 kitchens, so there is like a 21 chapter in the book. Okay, next. Yeah, so there is a uh, four topic I want to share today uh, in terms of architectural space uh, through my book. Uh, the first topic is expanding space. Yeah, next. Yeah. Uh, so this is the uh, the picture from uh, from uh, from the Rainbow Kitchen, and uh, that's the school kitchen in uh, Nagapatnam, uh, eight hours away from Chennai, south south direction. And this, there is there is two women cook in the kitchen school kitchen, and this lady is sitting almost all day and cutting vegetable uh, with this albarmanai. Yeah, next. And uh, uh, this is from the kitchen with banana flowers. So they are house uh, house uh, house stuff was uh, directly sitting on the stone floor and doing the grind grinding, as you see. And uh, it's all this smooth movement through the kitchen and to the next room and sitting on the floor was like a very inspiring. Next. Uh, so she is the other cook for Rainbow Kitchen, and uh, it was the end of their day. Uh, they cook starting from seven and it ended at four o'clock. And she was washing Bessel now. And uh, it was so that the last dish that they cook was like a vegetable rice, and it's for dinner. So she, she put the cover on, on, the, on the pot, and she bring all this like a burned wood on top of the reed to make the pot warm. And then she start to clean the floor and vessels and all this thing. And at the end, uh, the kitchen was empty as it started in the morning. And uh, I was sitting in the chair on the corner and seeing whole day these two ladies cooking, uh, cooking. And uh, I just felt how she clean all the kitchen and ends her day 
was like a seeing um, like a beautiful theater play that's like you know all the scenery kind of return to what it started at the beginning so yeah next one so this is uh, water pumping um yeah as you all know uh, maybe this is maybe very tough work uh, for women but for travelers yeah it it also looks very beautiful view that's like people gathering in the morning and they are chatting and uh, like getting water and bringing back next So it's uh, so next thing is hand movement. Next. Yeah, so I think Indian people use hands in cooking process much more than we do. Like um, like this, like a peeling, uh, peeling the cover of the coconut shelf. Or oh, next. And yeah, this is like the process of making a uh, tamarind juice. They put dried tamarind into the water and they squeeze with the hand and they make juice. And uh, they do several times until the, the, the fruits get very like a spongy. And yeah, it's very beautiful to see how hands work in the cooking process. Next. Yeah, like uh, you, you have this like a um, uh, small this assistant tool to hold the flying pan. Yeah, next. And you use hand for eating. Yeah, next. And uh, so this is the scenery from the kitchen as a landscape, and it's her uh, grandma and her grandson. And while she was cooking, uh, uh, and she 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 cooked lunch for us, and uh, and uh, uh, when finally she let us eat, and after that she start eating, her grandson comes, and then she make a mixture of rice and sambal, and making small bowl and throw to to son's grandson's mouth. And he was really eating and uh, swallowing uh, to get the next one. And uh, I see, I see this adult uh, person uh, feeding uh, children with hand in other occasion in Rainbow Kitchen too. Um, when the elementary school student. Uh, one student broke his arms and so he couldn't use his uh, hands. So a teacher was also mixing rice and samba and uh, feeding him with, with her hands. And this closeness was, yeah, I was a bit shocked or like not shocked, but uh, yeah, very emotionally uh, emotional to see how close you can be with the other. And uh, yes, so that's, yeah, next one. Uh, so sense of time in the space, next. So it's, uh, it's the harvest uh, celebration. It's Pongal in Tamil Nadu. Uh, it's January, it's harvest festival. And uh, people make Pongal, this is the first day and people make Pongal and worshiping to the sun. Next. And uh, uh, their grandmother was making altar in the morning and this vessel and she decorated with the ginger and turmeric leaves and she used this water to cook porridge, uh, pongal, rice porridge after that. Next. So when she was cooking porridge and when it's this uh, cooked rice, cooked rice uh, water like over floating from the vessel, she was uh, uh, kind of shouting, singing, shouting like Ponga Ponga. And I was like really surprised to see like what's happening. And she said, this is Ponga. And uh, 
I was uh, very, very moved to know that uh, so pongal means uh, not only po rice porridge and not only festival, but also it's the name for this moment that this cooked rice water is coming out from the pot and that kind of the tells the richment of the harvest. And, uh, you know, I still uh, know a only a little bit about Tamil uh, Nadu or South Indian culture, but I felt it's such a rich culture and such a maybe history, like uh, the culture with long history, which gives the name to this certain moment. Yeah, next. Okay, uh, so yes, we all know architecture space tells how people live, but yeah, for as a traveler, like me, who don't know anything about South India, it really gives a lot of hint. Uh, the architecture gave me a lot of hint. Next. So this is the actually a whole house plan in vernacular house in fishing village in Belankani. I visited in the kitchen with power cut. And uh, yeah, with the vernacular house, I kind of made an ex exception that I made a whole drawing of the house because it's, yeah, it's, it was to record. So it's very typical house with the narrow, like a first room is like kind of guest room and living room and kit and puja room, prayer room, and then kitchen room behind. And uh, it's kind of when you go deeper the house, it gets darker because both side of the house was covered with the wall. And uh, actually it was raining that day, so it's maybe even more darker. And after the kitchen, it's kind of half outside space. So you kind of, it's, you have a roof and uh, uh, wooden stove and the stone grinder that's like you use fire and water so it's a bit like a half outside space okay next so in this house our daughter-in-law was cooking uh, lunch for us I mean for all of us and then it gets this power cut uh, they said they have this power cut 10 hours a day that time and uh, and she, she made a light in, in the candle and she started to cook again. And this young lady uh, have a, such a long arm and long leg and actually she was very beautiful lady. And she moves so fast, like she is like getting water from outside and coming back to the fridge and sitting on the floor and cutting vegetables and putting the fire on the gas and start to fry and it like her movement was very fast and I was looking and I thought mm, maybe she didn't need this candle she just made a light for me maybe she just can move it uh, without light Maybe, you know, this power cut is such a part of her everyday life that maybe she doesn't care so much. But it's for, for traveler like me, uh, it feels very strange or it's like a strange in nice way. That's like she, I felt she kind of moves between contemporary life and traditional life in, in front of me like in this dark house with, without electricity and uh, cooking. And it was yeah, such an such a intensive, intensive cooking session. And uh, yeah, at the end, uh, even we couldn't talk to each other, we become friends. Yeah, next. And the next one is, this is also the plan for Rainbow Kitchen. Uh, yeah, I talk a lot about uh, this, it's the school kitchen. Okay, next. Uh, next, please. So, uh, uh, sorry, can you go back? Yes, this one. 
So this is the exterior of their kitchen. And uh, when we arrived at the school and uh, we visited this kitchen, I felt, wow, it's so their kitchen. It looked like a shed for my eye. And, uh, and uh, but yeah, next, next, please. But next morning, I visited this kitchen again to see the whole day process. It was like about 7 a.m. and that first thing she does was like um, making a stove, wooden stove, and then start to boil the water to make chai. And then I understand the reason why they have this wire net and wooden net fence around the kitchen. Yeah, it, it has to let the smoke out. And um, so it's kind of like this, uh, the first impression changed so much. Uh, the impression of the building architecture changed so much when I actually started to see the movement of people inside the space. And it was also a very remembering moment that she's making, uh, once she's making a fire and start to make a chai for us, the landscape around, the nature around the change. It was like a moisture and wet after the raining in whole evening. And, uh, but uh, after this, uh, the smoke and uh, the steam uh, come uh, to the garden uh, outside, it somehow felt it, it turned to become the place for humans and maybe nighttime ends and uh, it's the place changed to the, the place for humor. And uh, it was, uh, you know, I have never experienced this uh, um, thing before that like really fire changed the place. Yeah, next one. Yeah, so landscape behind our kitchens. Uh, so it's actually, it's after this book. Yeah, next one. Uh, next, please. Yeah, this one. Uh, so the uh, this June uh, second edition, second print of the Japanese version was printed, and that time Japanese publisher said like, why why don't you write a new chapter uh, for for this second second print? Yes, and so they will make a kind of extra chapter, and they will assert to the book. And uh, it was about, it was June and it was about the time that uh, our stay home uh, compulsory was slowly, slowly getting over. And uh, uh, next, please. Next, please. Uh, okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, so, uh, so that was uh, like a June, July, that was the time that I start to go this rice field again. Uh, I help rice field in south, south part of uh, Tokyo. And uh, it's kind of a traditional rice field on bottom of the small mountain valley. And uh, people do the rice farming in traditional way and uh, yeah. Uh, we are making net uh, because yeah, it's it's a bit, um, when was it? It was like uh, August, so it's a bit before. But yeah, so, and uh, so I decided to write a new chapter uh, about my experience going back to this rice field. And then story turned to so that uh, because I visited uh, Chennai this January, and I visited this Gita, the, the director of this Tara books. Now she has a, she has a, a new kind of garden uh, in countryside and we visited together and she's making vegetable there. And uh, when I start going back to rice field, my uh, Saturday, Saturday routine, my memory of this experience time in Chennai was overlapping. And uh, so the story turned to be so that the, it's, the, it's my experience, like making vegetable and being in the landscape in both uh, 
Japan and also South India. And I, I showed it this text to Gita uh, before publishing. So, and she kind of also reply and adding her text. So it becomes so that kind of, we kind of communicate um, through, through this new additional text. And, uh, and it's actually uh, the next topic that I really want to talk. Uh, I want to try and want to make book about. Um, I, I really enjoy working on kitchen space and how people cook and uh, maybe kitchen and uh, also the landscape behind. So maybe the next step can be so that like also maybe the landscape behind the kitchen will be a part of the kitchen story. And maybe that one, uh, it will be not only about South India, but maybe between Japan and uh, India, because uh, I really experience both. But like, let's see how it goes. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much, Architect Now, for, uh, for a brilliant presentation again, and such an absorbing journey through your book. Uh, I think uh, I would like to uh, open this session for conversation. And I must take this opportunity to thank our DU Bibliophiles and to you, Architect Now, for being a part of our reading group for nearly six weeks now. Yeah. So our reading group was established nearly six weeks ago, uh, and you were an active and excited participant. Our mm -hmm. group has been really diverse with architects, students of architecture, um, you know, we've had bibliophiles um, who have actually uh, been pre-university students, urban designers, landscape architects, chefs, filmmakers, joined the group from India, Sri Lanka, pa uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan. Uh, I feel that our reading group uh, has been so enthusiastic about uh, this book and they've been simply fascinated by the sketchbook format. Uh, of this spatial culinary travelogue. The book has been hugely popular within the regional design community and has received a lot of appreciation. It has also had uh, people, family members and friends share this reading room space. Vaibhavi, Spandita, Varun and his grandmother, Mrs. Shanta, Simran and her grandmother. <laughs> so it's just been such an intimate reading space. Each week, our reading group bibliophiles have shared their impressions of your book through, their, through a visual or written format, through film format, recipes on our Design United Instagram page. So it's mm -hmm. been such a creative reading as well as appreciation of your book. So I would like to thank this, uh, take this opportunity to thank Anashwara, Samudyata, Josefa, Simran, Ekta, Ishana, Vaibhavi, Spandita, Kavana, Naomi, Preeti, and Tanusha, Nitya, Divya, Mehdi, Tripura Sundari, Srishti, Zed, Lamya, Priya, Sahil, Maitri, Tejaswini, sorry, the list is long, Ekta, uh, Kartika, uh, Shubham, Grishma, Mrs. Shanta, Varun, Simran, Pandita and Vaibhavi. These were the members who were our DU bibliophiles. So the conversation with you today is going to be facilitated by two of the DU bibliophiles, students from the Wadiyar Academy of Architecture, Mysore, Nitya and Varun. Audience, we welcome your questions and we invite you to type your questions for Architect Now. Thank you, Architect Now. Varun and Nitya, it's, we leave the space open to you. Hi, Architect Nao. Thank you for your beautiful presentation. Uh, it was indeed a beautiful journey through the South Indian kitchens. Uh, as architects, we always categorize kitchen as a service space, but it also reveals so much about our culture, lifestyle, and habits of all the people mm -hmm. living in. Mm -hmm. it, so... Uh, I just want to know if you are curious about exploring any other places or, and cultures through their kitchens and cuisines apart from India and Japan? Um, 
it's I uh, yeah maybe this method uh, can apply to any any place <laughs> and uh, but yeah maybe I also wants to yeah I mean I want to do it also in with Finland uh, because it's also uh, while while I'm uh, I'm traveling through South India also I think about my time in Finland a lot because it's somehow very far away each other, like Finland and South India, but you both have a very kind of like, you both kind of feel like a look at the edge, edge of the place and it's also with the extreme nature. So I somehow also see the common thing. And uh, yeah, so yeah, maybe Finland and then I can, of course, I can think about a lot of friends who does the bee breeding and fishing. And also maybe I have this Sami friend, this indigenous people in Arctic circle and they live with reindeer and, uh, you know, in very, very like extreme nature, but they have such a beautiful philosophy for cuisine and eating like um, cooking so yeah and also always maybe more directly connect to their landscape the idea of the landscape in that way yeah maybe Finland would be like a yeah I want to do that <laughs> thank you I'm sure those explorations are going to be wonderful too yeah <laughs> thanks uh, thank you thank you architect now so, uh, you know, uh, there is a lot of similar similarities between different uh, kitchens that you see. I mean, like different places have different kinds of kitchen, like different countries have different kinds of kitchen. So uh, is there any one stocking, uh, uh, you know, for difference that you see in uh, Indian, Indian and Japanese kitchens? Is there any similar thing that you uh, find? Similar thing? Yeah, in Indian and Japanese kitchen. Okay. You know, actually, um, this uh, first kitchen and uh, this uh, this uh, this expanding kitchen, the measurement of this kitchen is exactly the same as my mother's. <laughs> so it's I mean it's uh, it's it's yeah. I just thought okay, maybe, maybe this is like um it's maybe response to your mod body movement, yeah. So it's, it's quite a standard of the space that maybe you need for cooking for family house. And uh, I thought it's quite like a nice coincidence to see that like, a, you know, both, both kitchen has the, about the same size. And uh, also uh, for similarity, uh, because uh, South Indian cooking, uh, talking about space, can, uh, because uh, you, uh, we both eat rice as our main dish. So like uh, food culture around rice is very similar. Like uh, there is like a lemon rice or they make, the people make mango pickles and such. And it's to preserve the rice in good condition in hot, humid weather, I think. And we have like a plum pickle and we also make like maybe, you know, sushi and with vinegar and we make, we also make a, a, a garlic, no, 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 ginger pickle uh, to keep the, the rice like to, you know, to keep longer. So maybe this kind of like a wise, um, the knowledge of uh, uh, keeping rice good for longer term or the the food around rice the idea is yeah i think we have a quite similar idea yes uh, yeah. thank you thank you so much uh hello architect now uh, <laughs> so, uh so one of the aspects that you have discussed uh in the chapters in the book is this idea of uh, uh, pakuam, which is basically how uh, the uh, taste of the dish is uh -huh. defined by hands. So, uh, how how do you find this aspect coming out in Japanese cuisine? Um, 
we we don't have a specific word for this but uh, we I, I think we talk about this L like um, like because we make this do you know this onigiri it's this rice bowl and uh, it's like a, we make triangle so but like a, so and we directly uh, squeeze rice with our hand and it's kind of the taste of mother and uh, so that and also we uh, we have a kind of like a, a fermented like a pickle bed that we put a lot of vegetable and we like kind of mix every day and uh, that actually really belongs to the house and also the mother of the house and actually that we also think it's kind of like this taste uh, the taste of the hand matters because it tastes so different depending on the person who is mixing every day. So yeah, yeah. I mean, but we don't have specific a specific word for that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Just just slightly off the topic, uh, as we were speaking, my mother was uh -huh. just eating coconuts using the arivai manai, and uh, I was just listening to that, and it just reminded me of the book. So everything kind of it brings me back to the book and the way you have uh, put in the illustrations to it so i mean it's a very nice experience that way thank you so much uh, thank you. you so your mom is using aibar manai yeah yeah she she is wow. right now doing it to make fresh coconut chutney ah uh, nice how luxury <laughs> uh. arigato uh, architect now okay. arigato gozaimasu <laughs> arigato gozaimasu so um, in Indian cooking, you find a lot of um, shortcuts to like, like fasten up the whole process. So are there uh -huh. shortcuts in Japanese uh, cooking too? Shortcut in uh, Japanese cooking. Yeah. <laughs> Do we? <laughs> Um, that's well, yeah, I mean, we, but not like yours, right? because you are very wise, like you have even this, like uh, this small container for the pressure cooker, yeah, you put like the rice and put in the pressure cooker and you cook at once and we don't have such things. And uh, uh, oh, that I don't find it. Yeah, I mean, of course we. Yeah, I mean, for this kind of like a ready, not ready made, but like, um, but this is not good answer. We, I, I don't, I, I will think about it and tell you <laughs> next time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we have the next question from the audience. So this is from uh, Misa Fujita. Uh, uh -huh. It's very interesting that her articles have a meaningful tactile for blind people or more. Could I ask that? Does the book's cover have, have any kind of tactile or special printing skills? Perhaps that is printed on uh, silk screen. This, you mean this book? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, I mean, actually, yeah, I mean, the one who, who has book uh, maybe noticed that there is like uh, the texture of the banana leaves on the cover. And uh, yeah, it's actually very nice question. Or oh, thank you for reminding. Yeah, and it's, 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 this idea doesn't come from me. It's, it come, the idea comes from Tara. That's like, uh, let's make uh, the texture of this uh, banana leaves on the, on the cover. And uh, yeah, and uh, actually with the Japanese version, we also made it. Uh, yeah, we also made it with the, yeah, this kind of this, they make a metal plate and uh, press and uh, so it, 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 it is actually one, one extra step 
to make a make a texture on the cover. But yeah, it's yeah, this is very tactile and maybe Tara people know about my work and maybe they connect in, in unconsciously in their mind or what? yeah. It's a nice coincidence that I talk about today tactile and yeah, because uh, tactile cover. Yeah, so true. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, uh, Rupali Sebastian wants to ask you, what is your fondest memory from travels to South Indian kitchens and your favorite dish? Sorry. Uh, um, so uh, the question is, what is your fondest memory from the book, like when you were writing the book and your favorite dish? Okay. Like, so my found memory. It's, it's very difficult to choose one, yeah? Um, it's, it's actually like all the thing happening in this book or in my three months was, I just uh, enjoy so much and I meet so nice people. But yeah, maybe just to come to my mind that when the book was published and I visited Chennai again and we had a book launching party or like an event at Tara Books and we invited all the people like who are in the book to this event and of course like maybe half of the people couldn't come because they live in the countryside and such but maybe half people came and uh, this uh, the lady come with her with her cook uh, this uh, this organic organic kitchen the the chapter from the organic kitchen uh, so the, the 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 women come with her cook to this book lounge event and uh, this uh, the, her, the cook the women made a speech uh, and uh, she said she was uh, very moved that she get like she's a part of this book and she kind of uh, feel um, happy that uh, her job or her everyday life is described and uh, I see something very precious in her you know in her work and uh, yeah it was kind of very touching to see that the 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 kind of uh, how to say the stuff at house that's actually we don't have it in Japan that's for me yeah that's very Indian thing for for my eye that you like a lot of ordinary people have uh, like a cook in your home and uh, like how to make a relationship with them is maybe tells a lot about uh, yourself. And, uh, and yeah, I, I was very moved to see that, that this lady come to our event and uh, made a speech in front of all of us. Yeah. And my favorite dish is difficult and uh, the... Uh, but I would say rasam because I often cook for myself, especially like this time that it's getting dark and uh, I feel a bit uneasy. Like I feel like mm, maybe I'm getting flu or something. Then I feel like, okay, it's time for rasam. And, uh, and then, and actually rasam, I feel it's very simple food, but you know, I sometimes cook whole dish to my family and friends and everyone really loves rasam. Like they said, like, what is this soup? This very simple soup, but it's very tasty. And uh, I, I was a bit surprised that like, you know, people kind of find it every time in this big dinner I make. And then you know, people start to talk about rasam. So, yeah. So maybe that's my favorite food dish was, is rasam, I just have to say. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think there's one more audience question. Okay. 
I think Shriya Dinesh asks, how do you think we can translate the various textures in a kitchen while designing one? Hmm? How can you translate various textures uh -huh. in a kitchen while designing one? Hmm. Design design where in in India <laughs> or um, I don't think she specifies. I think she means yeah. in a more general way, yes. architect. Now. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't. Um, sorry, I don't find a good answer. Hmm. Yeah, the, uh, but uh, I don't know if I'm answering his question, but like uh, actually I once thought about like uh, seeing so much kitchen, like South Indian kitchen, and if I ever get a chance to design kitchen or house in the India, in South India, like what do I do? And uh, that's, yeah, maybe that's maybe all we experience, like kind of what we experience that doesn't directly appear to our design. <laughs> it's more like a very subconscious and uh, I, I, and especially I don't, uh, I, I'm not trying, uh, I'm not do, um, uh, yeah, like I, yeah, like kind of di direct transformation is a bit too much. So it's kind of, uh, mm, I don't think so much this one to one, like uh, translate into design, like what I experience. So it's difficult, but maybe it's more like if I would ever design uh, the house in India, I would really use my experience seeing how variety of use use you do in in the kitchen space, like like maybe the relation to outside, or a relation to the floor, or a relation to the living room, or like relation to the window. Maybe I will be very conscious, like thinking about the all the behavior I see in 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 my book. I I hope I. Am answer something <laughs> yes thank you so much um so i think i would like to um thank you for being our very second author on a uh, reading room with design united yeah. and sharing your wonderful design and book journey with us we would also like to thank uh, tara and also, I would like to wish you, Uni Design, and the book the very best. We hope you will return here with your second book. Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, Design United believes in supporting independent publishers and local bookstores. So mm -hmm. I greatly admire and thank Tara Books. I think their work is wonderful. And we thank them for being so supportive of DU Reading Room. I'd like to also take this opportunity to thank our moderators, Grishma, Shubham, Varun, Nitya, the DU Bibliophiles, and our audience, Clayworks, DU VSLA team. I really hope our audience will get a copy of your wonderful book. So please have a great evening, and thank you all for joining us. Please join us in our next design conversation and reading room session. I would like to request DU team Kavindu Sakshi from our, our Design United team to share our upcoming series of events. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nao, for your wonderful presentation today. Uh, thanks to our okay. moderators and our bibliophiles for an interesting and thought-provoking conversation. Uh, we'd like to extend our gratitude to Clayworks for supporting this webinar and all of our future webinars. Um, earlier this month, we had a student giveaway of um, Nao's book, Travels Through South Indian Kitchens, and I'd like to congratulate Nidhi for um, winning the contest. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. Uh, also, due to popular demand, we will have another student giveaway of the book. We'll be conducting a sketching contest. So stay tuned and follow our Instagram page for more updates on that. Uh -huh. Uh, so far, Design United has successfully completed 29 installments of Design Conversations, and we have many more exciting speakers lined up with designers across the spectrum joining us to share their thoughts. Uh, next week, we're joined by architect Yanta from Modern Space, along with architect Ajit Andagiri in the design practice. Uh, we're joined by multidisciplinary designers in November. We're pleased to have Studio Karam, the spectacular engineer Deepal Vikramasinghe, who worked with the late Jeffrey Bauer on his Kandalam Hotel. He'll be talking about the restoration of the Benthoda Hotel. Along with Deepal, we will have the renowned Indian engineer Manjunath with two inspiring Indian structural engineers. Do you also fill in a feedback form that will pop up on your browser about today's webinar? Join us and stay inspired. And so follow us on our social media for our upcoming conversation. Until next time, thank you. Stay safe and take care. Um, we request Dr. Uh, to please stay. Um, we would love to hear your thoughts on uh, the session today and your feedback. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback on uh, today's session. Oh, okay. So it's over? The, the official thing is over? Yeah, it's over. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, thank you. I, I enjoyed. I enjoyed very much. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, it's it's nice that the, uh, because I asked uh, how many how many people uh, will watch this uh, talk session, and uh, they said about twenty no ninety one people uh, register. So it's kind of I could imagine like you know how how big or like uh, you know what kind of audience they are, and uh, yeah. So yes, it was very nice experience like talking to you in. India and many, you know, countries around India. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, architect. Now your presentation is extremely uh, wonderful and inspiring. And I'm sure that everybody who is tuned in today took back a lot of value. Uh, with that, we conclude uh, this session. So I'd like to thank Varun, uh, Nitya, Shubham, and Grishma, and Kavindu from the team for uh, making this possible today. Mm -hmm. And I hope to keep in touch with you, architect. Yes, you. same, same. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting me tonight. I enjoyed very much. Yeah. <laughs>